Imagine discovering that the reason your new build flip flipped out wasn't actually a problem with the quad, but something that you forgot to do when setting it up in Betaflight. This happens because if you don't set it up correctly, the flight controller has no idea which way it's meant to be facing and where each motor is supposed to be, so it just flips out. In this video, I will reveal the simple thing I forgot to do that caused this very problem for me, as well as the more pain I caused for myself by not following a simple step-by-step -step troubleshooting process that would have saved me a pointless trip to the flying spot and a lot of headaches. But that's not all, I'll show you how to avoid this problem altogether, and we'll also take a look at the brand new three and a half inch frame and 8004 motors from Flyfish RC. But first up, let's get into the build for my Flyfish RC Volador three and a half inch. Now, the hardest part about building a three and a half inch quad is trying to get all the right parts. And it's like walking a tightrope to balance size, weight, and power, as well as capturing great video. Assembling the three and a half inch Volador was pretty straightforward, but it does use a lot of hardware, which is typical of most Flyfish RC builds. I really like that the front section was more compact than their five inch frames and Flyfish RC have also been a little bit creative as to how they mount the receiver. Rather than it being squished somewhere into the frame, they've done this TPU receiver holder that sits under the rear. For the electronics, I'm gonna use the Foxy Reaper all-in-one V4, which has been my go-to all-in-one flight controller and I've been using it on all my five inch ultralight racing builds which all runs success. This is where things start to get a little tricky. You see, most all-in-ones use a 25 by 25 mounting pattern and Flyfish RC have this as a square mount rather than the traditional diamond. So this is where I'm gonna to have to do some specific beta flight configuration to make it all work. This meant I had to mount the flight controller back to front to make it fit. Otherwise there just wouldn't be any room. With the motors, typically the 1404 motors that are used on most three and a half inch quads feel very underpowered. So what I found works best is actually to use 8004 motors because they offer at the low to medium end of the throttle curve, a lot more torque, which gives you a lot more power and responsiveness. And they also have lower resistance than the smaller motors, which gives you longer flight times but you do have the penalty of weight as they're a little bit bigger. I wanna run this build on 6S, so we're gonna go with the 2450 kV motors. And the battery I'm using is the Bonker 550 milliamp hour 6S LiPo. But if you wanted to go with 4S, which is perfectly fine, you can go with the 3500 kV motors and use a 4S 850 milliamp hour battery. To capture video on a three and a half inch quad, you can use something like the GoPro Bones or the Insta360 Go but I find the short battery life or having to wire it to the flight controller to just be a pain in the butt. Fortunately, this is where the DJI O3 Air unit really shines because you can get up to 4K 120 frames per second on board recording. Now to make sure that the DJI O3 camera is as soft mounted as possible, the silicon inserts for the CNC camera mounts. And Flyfish RC also sent me their DJI O3 stubby antenna which works really, really well. After getting it all built, the Volador 3.5 had a dry weight of 203 grams. With the 6S 550 milliamp hour battery, it came in at 304 grams. If you went up to a slightly bigger battery, like a 6S 650 milliamp hour, you're gonna end up at 318 grams. And sure, we're a bit over the 250 grand limit, but meh, who's gonna know? Now it's time to configure it in Betaflight. Because I had mounted the flight controller square and backwards, I had to set the board alignment to your minus 45 degrees and gyro to clockwise or CW 90 degrees. Then when it came to tuning the quad, I used the Superfly freestyle three to four inch preset. Foxy have already pre-flashed the Reaper all-in-one V4 with Blue Jay. So it just meant that all I had to do was check that the motors were spinning in the correct direction. But this is where I then missed that critical step that ended sending me into a world of pain. But I wasn't to know, so I charged up my batteries and went out to fly. After arriving at the flying spot and getting all ready to fly, even though it was a little bit late in the afternoon, it was time to arm my quad and take the Volador 3.5 out for its maiden flight. After all, it was supposed to have been set up correctly, but then, this is where I then saw two characters that made me realize I had completely fucked up. Those two letters were M and three, which meant motor three. And they were meant to say M and one for motor one. 
And that's when I knew that I missed that critical step in beta flight. But I shouldn't have had to worry because I carry the Speedy B adapter in my bag, which allows me to use my phone to configure Betaflight through the Speedy B app. Except I was running an unreleased version of Betaflight on the Reaper all in one. So the obvious solution was then just to flash it with a compatible version of Betaflight and it would be fixed and able to fly. But that didn't work. And after flashing Betaflight and going through the reorder motor wizard, oh, by the way, PSA, don't do what I did and leave your props on, take them off. I then had to reconfigure the ports tab and the receiver tab as well as the modes tab just to be able to get it to arm. And I thought everything was sorted. All right. It's not set up right. So basically, because the board alignment has changed so the board alignment is completely around the wrong way i've tried to not only reflash beta flight because foxy has sent it with the 4.5 and speedy b app doesn't work on 4.5 so i've had to flash 4.4 anyway we did the motor order uh so that should work and i think now i'd have to do the motor direction and to be honest it's it's almost five o'clock where sunset the mozzies are out and i'm getting chopped so I'm just going to go home, take the props off, plug it back into beta flight, just go through, set it up from scratch again, and make sure everything works before I leave, which is what I should have done in the first place. But a little bit rushed, wanted to get out the door and fly. Anyway, it is what it is. What the issue was is that the CLI dump I took before updating beta flight in the field didn't actually save when I reapplied it. So the changes I had made to my board alignment when I originally set up the quad didn't take. And this caused the issue of the quad flipping out after all that secondary setup because the flight controller still didn't know which way it was facing and where the motors were. So when building any quad, here's a simple process to ensure it's set up correctly. And you should also follow this as your troubleshooting process. Otherwise you're gonna end up down a rabbit hole that just doesn't solve your problem. Step one, put your quad flat on the table facing forwards. In the setup tab of Betaflight, click reset Z axis and calibrate accelerometer. Then pick up your quad, tilt it forwards and backwards side to side to make sure the 3D model follows your movements. If it doesn't, go to the configuration tab and adjust board and sensor alignment until it does. You wanna adjust gyro alignment and your degrees until the 3D model in the setup tab follows your movements. Step two, without your props on, reorder motors. I always do this whether I've changed the ESC layout or not, just make sure that it's always correct. And then if you're running props out, tick motor direction is reversed. Then click motor direction and follow the motor direction wizard to ensure that the motors are spinning in the same direction as the arrows. Step three, take your props out and get two left facing, also known as counterclockwise and two right facing or clockwise props and put them on in the same direction as the arrows. I always fly props out because it means the front motors spin towards their side. The front left motor spins towards the left, so it gets a left facing prop. The front right motor spins towards the right, so it gets a right facing prop. Pretty simple. Then the rear motors are just the opposite of the front motors. The other way to think about it for props is that the motors which are diagonally opposite each other both spin in the same direction, so get the same direction prop. With that all now configured correctly, it was time to go out and actually see how the Volador three and a half inch quad flies. Take two at trying to fly the Volador three and a half inch. We're at a different flying spot today because where I was at last night, they've actually got the model trains running. So as much as it would be cool to chase those model trains around, there's gonna be a lot of people there and not as easy to fly PV. So let's get flying.
after flying several packs, here are the things I would change. Firstly, if I was to build this again, I'd use a 20 by 20 mini stack. And this is because it would give me more room and I can mount the stack in the right direction. Having to mount it back to front means the battery lead is at the front and the batteries don't quite fit as well as that I would ideally like them to be. So having the battery lead at the back has a better fit. And you also save about four grams of weight from losing less hardware. Secondly, I'd also get the TBS Tracer extended antenna, which is compatible with Express LRS, and mount the receiver behind the DJI 03 camera. I don't like the receiver tray under the rear of the frame, not because it's a bad idea, just because it's unconventional. I really do like the Volador three and a half inch quad, and I think it might just be my new favorite three and a half inch, but only time will tell. However, if you're still not convinced about three and a half inch freestyle quads, watch this video here where I compare one with a five inch freestyle build. I'm Darren Allett, until next time, don't forget to send it.